World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth in 13 minutes, a quick recap of everything that happened during the expansion. After defeating the Burning Legion again and imprisoning Sargeras at the end of Legion, he plunges his sword into Azeroth, this only destroyed the deserted zone of Silithus, but causes some bad wounds inside, making the planet bleed Azerite, which has magical potential, so after joining forces to defeat the greatest threat to the planet, the Alliance and Horde are once again at war over rocks, while Magni gives everyone a new necklace, the Heart of Azeroth, to claim Azerite and help heal the wounds. Sylvanas launches an attack to take over parts of Kalimdor, ending with her winning Darkshore, and after getting mad and remembering what Arthas did to her, orders the burning of Teldrassil. The alliance is pissed. Sylvanas! After Dardassus is destroyed, Anduin and the rest of the alliance leaders plan an attack on Undercity to reclaim it as Lordaeron. Meanwhile, Jaina sings a song about herself and her father, and finds her father's ship, regretting trusting the Horde. Sorfang and Zappy Boy get ready for battle, while Sorfang remembers his dead son, killed in Icecrown Citadel, and considers his loyalty to Sylvanas. The battle for Undercity begins. Sylvanas starts throwing gas and reviving the dead soldiers, but Jainas shows up with her ship destroying the gas and breaching the walls. The alliance seems victorious, Sorfang is captured, remaining to fight, they reach Sylvanas in the old throne room, and as they seem to have won, Sylvanas flies away and triggers explosions in the city, making it unusable just like Gilneas. You've won nothing. The Alliance is again pissed. Sylvanas! Looking for new allies and new playable races, Jaina takes the Alliance to the proud kingdom of Kultiras. Getting there, Jaina's mother, Catherine, refuses the Alliance's request for aid and also arrests Jaina and exiles her for her part in the death of her father. The three regions of Kultiras become disbanded, so Anduin and Greymane send Alliance champions to aid in the unification of the kingdom earn their trust and help turtles make it to the water, while also getting aid from Telia Fordragon, the daughter of Bolvar. The Alliance is successful in unifying Kultiras, making Katerin feel sorry for Jaina, and helps the Alliance find her and save her from her prison and torture, helping Jaina deal with her past failures and regrets for her father, Teramor, and Artas. The Alliance and the Kultirans unite to defend the capital city Boralus from a pirate siege after which Jaina is named Lord Admiral and pledges the Kultiras navy to the Alliance. Meanwhile, the Horde goes to the ancient kingdom of Zandalar, seeking the trust of King Rastakan for his golden fleet. They assist dealing with local threats through the continent, while learning of the presence of an artificial old god, Ghun, worshipped by the Blood Trolls. While Zul, the king's chief advisor, is revealed to be the Blood Trolls' leader, attacking Rastakan and breaking Ghun's seal. Champions of the Horde, and Alliance too because they want gear from the raid as well, venture into Uldir and destroy Zul and Ghun, while also freeing Mother, a titanic watcher that will aid them later on. After a short bending to defeat yet another existential threat, the Horde and Alliance resume their faction war, the Alliance launching an assault on the Zandalar capital city of Dazaralor, with the goal of destroying their fleet the relation between the Zandalari and the Horde, and to capture their king. But Rastakan is overwhelmed by the power of his pact with the Luabuan Samdi, a powerful god of death, and the Alliance champions are forced to slay the king. Enraged by his death, the Horde launch a counterattack on the Alliance forces, leaving Mechatork wounded, while Jaina holds them back as long as possible for the Alliance to retreat, before teleporting out and leaving them a water elemental as a mount. Tyrande and Malfurion launch an attack on Darkshore against Anduin's advice. Tyrande undergoes a ritual to turn herself into the Night Warrior of Elune, and they take back the area from the Horde. Anduin sees the honor in Sorfang and that he also is against Sylvanas, wanting his old Horde back, so he decides to free him so that he may help stop her. Sylvanas, learning of this, sends Horde champions after Sorfang to track and assassinate him, while also causing a conflict of loyalty towards her from inside the Horde. Sylvanas resurrects Jaina's dead brother Derek as a Forsaken and tortures him, with the intent of using him as an agent to destroy the Proudmoor family from within, an act that horrifies the other Horde leaders. Bane Bloodhoof, with the help of the Forsaken priest Arthur Zelling, free Derek and send him out of Horde territory, returning him to Jaina. Sylvanas finds out about Bane's treason, executing Zelling and imprisoning Bane. Sorfang travels to Nagrand in Outland to seek the aid of Troll, 
who went into hiding and re-rolled to warrior since the elements left him and he lost Doomhammer to every single shaman champion on Azeroth. After initially refusing to help, Troll and Sarfang are attacked by Sylvanas' assassins and he agrees to return. Lord Tamar, the leader of the Blood Elves, learned that Bane will be executed by Sylvanas, so he enlists Horde champions to help Bane and save him. The Horde champions meet with Sarfang and Troll, and an unexpected backup from Jaina, Shaw and Alliance champions seeking to save Bane as well. The combined forces defeat Sylvanas' forces and teleport Bane to Thunderbluff, where Troll and Jaina note how every attempt of peace between the two factions was in vain, but that this time there may be hope for a lasting peace. Horde. Alliance. We've come to this crossroad again and again, Jaina. It always falls apart. What's different this time? We are. In Stormsong Valley in Kultiras, Xalatat, an old god touched blade, is found, compelling champions to deliver relics to Nzot, the old god and master of Queen Ajara, accepting the challenge and defeating his champions while also freeing the spirit of the blade and horde champions bring the blade to Orgrimmar to Sylvanas. Sylvanas sends Nathanos with the blade on the sea with the remaining horde fleet. Hearing of this, the Alliance sends its fleet to pursue them, but in the middle of the chase, Queen Ajara uses the Tidestone to reveal the underwater Naga capital of Nazjatar, trapping the horde and the Alliance inside. After defeating the Naga forces, making them farm new rares and achievements here and on a new island of Mechagon, they retake the Tidestone and use it to open a way into Ajara's palace. Joining forces together under Jaina and Lord Tamar, the Alliance and Horde breach the palace, fighting her servants and confront the Queen herself. But it was all part of her plan to use the heart of Azeroth's power to break Nizot's seal and free him. She is defeated, but before she can be finished off, Nizot breaks free of his prison and pulls Ajara into the void. Realizing once again that their eternal conflict is dumb, the Alliance and Horde come together once more to dethrone Sylvanas. The numbers of both factions are dwindling after the long fort war. The leaders of both factions regroup in Dust Swallow March, not only to protect the factions, but Azeroth itself. Zakan, where is our home? Orgrimmar? Not our city, our home. Azeroth. And ours? Azeroth. Right now, there are only two forces in this world that matter. One bent on harming our world. And one that will protect her. So, what are we doing? Breaking the cycle. The combined forces launch an assault on Orgrimmar, but to avoid more bloodshed, Saurfang challenges Sylvanas in Makgora, a fight to the death for the leadership of the Horde. With Troll's blessing and Anduin's blade, Saurfang fights Sylvanas but is hopelessly outpowered. Sylvanas mocks that the hope dies with him, but Saurfang claims she may destroy many things, but she may never destroy hope. He manages to land a single hit before Sylvanas enrages and one-shots him with the blast of Valark magic claiming that she never cared for the Horde and only used them, losing the trust of her last remaining soldiers and leaving. The Horde is strong! The Horde is nothing! You are all nothing! Everyone is pissed. Silvana! 
a memorial is held for Sarfang and the Alliance and Horde agree to an armistice, bringing the end of the war, and the Horde now having a council for each race instead of a warchief, but Tyrande doesn't accept peace until Sylvanas is dead. Later, Retion, the grandson of Deathwing, comes to Stormwind, offering help against Zot. Anduin begins having visions of what may come, but accepts his aid. Invasions appear in Ulduar and Vale of Eternal Blossoms, as Nzot has taken refuge in his otherworldly city of Nihalota, seeking to merge it with Azeroth in order to recreate the Black Empire. Retion once again gives free legendary cloaks to champions that allow them to enter the city and defeat Nzot without the risk of being corrupted. The battle begins while the champions also free Ajara, that is held prisoner by Nzot, revealing that she wanted to destroy him with Xalatat, but he needed to be free beforehand. Somehow, the factions managed to defeat Nizot, the first fully freed old god they faced in Azeroth, and not just an avatar of an old god, the last and the most cunning old god that had planned this for thousands of years, is defeated in his first battle with a surge of energy from Azeroth through the necklace, destroying him and Nihiloto in Sauron style. Or maybe it was all a vision, as he knew what was going to happen before it happened, like he knew about what Sylvanas will do. The veil wanes. His crown will open the way. The fall of night reveals her true face. This takes us to the events leading over to Shadowlands, Sylvanas, having her plan completed, all the battles and deaths during the fourth war only making her master, the Jailer, and herself stronger. Travels to Northrend and confronts the Lich King Bolvar for Dragon, easily defeating his Scorch forces and himself with her new dark magic, taking his crown and breaking it, breaching the barrier between Azeroth and the Realm of the Dead, the Shadowlands where all the recently deceased souls went directly to the Jailer's realm, the Maw, empowering him and breaking the balance of the Covenants inside it. After Bolvar is defeated, Silvana sends Valkyr agents to capture faction leaders, including Bane, Troll, Jaina and Anduin, but they are unable to capture Tyranda. Both the Alliance and Horde discover that Natanos is just staying at his home, so they launch an attack to defeat him. But Tyranda shows up and easily beats him and executes him as vengeance for Terdrassil though that only sends him to Sylvanas in the Shadowlands. And that's the story leading up to Shadowlands, we'll see what happens with the Four Covenants and the ancient dead heroes that lie inside the realm, as well as the Jailer and Sylvanas' master plan, and even Zot will return. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the Shadowlands after we all die. Bye bye.